the Constitution will not be saved in Washington. Travis Wayne did so. In the Bergamite Branches, Joseph Smith History, uh, verse 33. <clears throat> Joseph Smith says, He called me by name and said unto me that he was a messenger sent from the presence of God to me, and that his name was originally Nephi, Willard Richards changed it to Moroni, that God had a work for me to do, and that my name should be had for good and evil among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and kindreds and tongues or that it should be both good and evil spoken of among all people. Who would have thought that it would have been the Brighamite Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that would have Joseph Smith's name be for evil? Gospel Topics Essays denounce Joseph Smith condemn him for being a polygamist, having raped a 14-year-old girl. They denounce him as a translator, saying he's just a revelator. And yet all at the same time, they're claiming he's the true successor upon which this church exists. And uh, since porn seems to do so well, uh, it won't be in the title, but I'll bring up some porn for you. This is for you women, and for those who are gay. Uh, Nephi, not Moroni, uh, is described by Joseph Smith as he uh, talks about his appearance to Joseph. Uh, in verse 30, While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room. Yes, he's got his own room, living with his family, in, the, in what would have been the log cabin home, <laughs> not the big home. <laughs> now, I'm sure that's what it was, Joseph. It's all encoded, and I'll get to that in just a minute. <clears throat> A light appeared in my appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday. There's a clue for you. When immediately a personage appeared at my bedside, standing in the air, and his feet did not touch the floor. Here it comes. Brace yourselves, women. You may want to sit down, get yourself a glass of water. He had on a loose robe of most exquisite whiteness. It was a whiteness beyond any earthly thing I had ever seen, nor do I believe that any earthly thing could be made to appear so exceedingly white and brilliant. His hands were naked, his arms also, a little above the wrist. So also were his feet naked. Getting the idea here? Naked, 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 naked as were his legs, a little above the ankles. His head and neck were also bare. Pay attention, here it comes. I could discover that he had no other clothing on but this robe, as it was open so that I could see into his bosom. My uh, ex-wife Karen is in denial that he was naked under the robe. <laughs> and so, yes, we I joke with her about how she's going to be naked in eternity. <laughs> so here's the, the coded part. In verse 34. He said there was a book deposited written upon gold plates, giving an account of the former inhabitants of this continent, 
and the source from whence they sprang. He also said that the fullness of the everlasting gospel was contained in it, as delivered by the Savior to the ancient inhabitants. He's talking about the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar, who had their treasure plates acquired from the dig that they performed at Solomon's Temple and uh, then were made Knights Templar by the Pope after whatever they found and then told the Pope about it. And the Pope then made them Knights and then they were in charge of the uh, pilgrimages of Christians to Jerusalem. And so the Knights Templar became filthy rich. But, remember Friday the 13th? Yeah future Pope didn't like them being so popular and being so rich and so uh, he uh, ordered their arrest and murder uh, but there were those who escaped and uh, oh by the way the Pope uh, accused them of worshiping Egyptian deities and uh, following the Egyptian records rather than the Christian Bible and, uh, and so yeah they fled up into the an island off the Sweden Finland area and uh, eventually in 1363 made it to America and we know this from the Kensington date the Kensington Stone date that was uh, in the Knights Templar version of rune language and so yeah the whole uh, breastplate Urim and Thummim even though it's referring to uh, the high priest of the, the uh, Jerusalem temple it's also Knights Templar coding and so uh, this was told after the fact by the way because what really happened was that uh, William Morgan came into town and as I've been telling you communicated with Joseph Smith senior who was the master mason of the Canandaigua New York Lodge of the York Rites which is the, the highest rank being Knights Templar and so then he he tells them of the end of the world he tells them uh, after telling me these things uh, regarding uh, the book that needs to be written he commenced quoting the prophecies of the Old Testament he first quoted the part of the third quoted part of the third chapter of Malachi and he quoted also the fourth and last chapter of the same prophecy though with little variation from the way it reads in our Bibles instead of quoting the first verse as it reads in our books he quoted it thus for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud yea all that do wickedly shall burn as stubble for they that come shall burn them, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. And uh, I will reveal unto you the priesthood by the hand of Elijah the prophet for the coming of the great and dreadful day. And uh, that, of course, happened on Passover, as Joseph claims the Kirtland Temple which was before he wrote this uh, 1838 history uh, but here's a disturbing thing if it were not so the whole earth would be utterly wasted at his coming well the sign of the Son of Man has already happened he's here it's now the war is on the question now remains 
will the whole earth be entirely wasted, utterly wasted? Remember, the Book of Mormon gives two scenarios where the entire nation of two different nations are utterly wasted. Jaredites and the Nephites. And then he talks about uh, 11th chapter of Isaiah was about to be fulfilled, 3rd chapter of Acts, uh, 22nd and 23rd verses, and miraculously exactly as the incorrect translation in the New Testament from the 1769 version of the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, he said that that prophet was Christ. And, uh, yeah, it's not the dead one, is it? Because the Book of Mormon, again, tells us we, as Mormons, are supposed to be the learning of the pre-captivity Jews, which is Egyptian. Then he quotes Joel, 28th verse to the last. And he said that this was not yet fulfilled, but was soon to be. Uh, that has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the uh, sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood. So let's see if we can find... Twenty-eight to thirty-two. Pour out of my spirit. Yep. Shall wonders, terrible day. Oh no, no. This is the prophecy one. Pour out my spirit. Uh, sons and daughters prophesy. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. Hand me. Oh no. Nope, there it is. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Thirty-one. <laughs> The sun shall be turned into darkness, moon turned to blood before the great day. Uh, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. See, they're two separate things. Joseph Smith explains this uh, in his July 19, 1840 uh, talk, where he calls the whole 12 Judas and says that the Constitution is going to be destroyed and the government of the United States destroyed but put out the hope as if it were a prophecy that a Mormon would save it but he called Mount uh, the cities of Zion and Jer New Jerusalem as mountain cities as he was talking about Nabu. So, let's go to the dates. So in love, so in love, so much in love, so in love. So I've already gone over Revelation chapter 12 and how using astronomy we're able to identify the precise date he's referring to. And that date was, past tense now, 23rd September 2017. So what happened in 2017? Well, that was the first year that Trump was president, put in in January. And uh, also that year we had the first of three days of darkness. 21st of August 2017, sun shall be darkened. That started it off. That was not just Monson's birthday. That was also the ancient Egyptian religious New Year. The ancient Egyptians knew the date. They knew the location. That's how incredibly knowledgeable they are with astronomy and geology, geography of the world. To know the date 
because to have their new year with a total solar eclipse that will eventually cross over the United States how did they know because this Egyptian prophecy goes back further than we have recorded records of because all of a sudden Egyptians have a fully developed record system how did they know far beyond what we have historical records of I've gone over uh, how old the Giza pyramids are but uh, yeah, I, they knew the date and so the Bible knew the date it was passed down so uh, John in Revelation chapter 12 gives us the date using astronomy as the universal calendar system because on earth mankind has been developing different types of calendar systems Babylon, Babylon for example created the first calendar system with a seven day week with day seven being a holy day because that was their superstitious day Oh, that's seven's a bad luck number. We better not work on that day. Yeah, the post-captivity Jews adopted all of the Babylonian stuff. That's why they're called Semites. And so if you're being mean to Jews, then you're an anti-Semite. But the pre-captivity Jews... were not they were Egyptian and so uh, they knew the dates Joel knew the date as uh, that's what it's referring to uh, if you're wondering about the middle one because you are probably aware of the third day of darkness on the 20 or 8th of April 2024 which is supposed to be after conference weekend when the Salt Lake Temple was supposed to be finished with the new law of chastity that may or may not have been reversed because of a certain lawsuit against the church where the plaintiff in that case exposed that <gasps> And really pissed off Nelson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here's how we know that the Smiths knew the dates. Uh, the holiness to the Lord parchment is a star chart, by the way. It's not magic, witchcraft, please. Anyway, it's from Jewish mysticism. <clears throat> For it came to pass in the commencement of the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah, king of Judah. Who's King Zedekiah? Who put him on the throne? Was he the son of the previous king? Or did Babylon come in and conquer Jerusalem and put Zedekiah on the throne of Babylon? Or Jerusalem, sorry. Yeah. He's a puppet king. Pay attention. Because in this first year, when Zedekiah is put on the throne of Jerusalem Lehi has a dream and in that dream he saw the heavens open in verse 8 and he thought he saw God sitting upon his throne he's looking at the heavens it's not the actual God it's not the actual throne he's having a dream 
He's seen the heavens. This is a sign in the heavens that he is witnessing. Surrounded with numerous concourses of angels in the attitude of singing and praising their God. And it came to pass that he saw one descending out of the midst of heaven. And he beheld that he his luster was above that of the sun at noon day. This is still part of the sign. And he also saw twelve others following him. And their brightness did exceed that of the stars in the firmament. This is John, the Revelator's sign in heaven. It's also from Isaiah. Isaiah just says, I, I give unto you a sign, a woman, a virgin, sorry, shall conceive and bear a son, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And so Lehi is then given a book and told of the destruction of Jerusalem. Do you see what is done here? The date of his dream is the same date from John. It's the same sign of Isaiah, of John, here in of Lehi. And that is 23rd September 2017. Who in America, because that's where the total solar eclipse occurred, so it's America they're talking about, not Jerusalem. Who was made president that year? Yeah. And you voted for him because you'd rather be Russian than vote Democrat? Who put him on the presidency? Exactly. I warned you and did the video about having come back from the grocery store and hearing a woman there by the orange juice talking on her phone and speaking Russian. There are Russians here in Utah. Russians are behind QAnon. Russians are behind the anti-vaxxer movement. Remember that? Oh, vaccine, measles vaccines give us autism, give our kids autism. Yeah, and then what happened? Parents didn't give their kids the vaccinations for measles. Guess what happened? We had measles eradicated from the United States until the anti-vaxxer backed Russian propaganda that got you, um, American citizens and even Utahns to believe in the fear. And their kids got measles. It was brought back into the United States. And that was just the test to see if they could then believe something far worse and insidious coming that Joseph Smith knew was coming and knew the date of when it would be unleashed on the United States. Because the news, as I noticed, from Fox 13 News Utah here on YouTube, had a segment posted about an anti-masker rally at the Capitol building yesterday. They're still pushing for anti-masks. Like I said, we have Russians here in Utah. Do you think Russians are saying, oh, we all better wear masks? Or do you think they're saying, oh, don't wear masks? It's foolish. It's ridiculous. It's all a hoax. The virus is just a hoax. It's all better now. There's too much confusion in the government. We can't trust them. We're just going to do our own thing. 
What do you think Russia wants to do to America? Yeah, like I said, there are Russian sleeper cells in Utah. And so let me give you the dates and the, the weapon. I've already revealed it, but uh, as we all know, because it's already happened, but let me show you that Joseph already knew it. And remember, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from Brigham Young are the ones throwing Joseph Smith under the bus. They are denouncing him. They are having his name for evil. Do you understand this? So section 45... This is the weapon that Joseph knew was going to be used because of William Morgan coming to Canandaigua. And there shall be men standing in that generation, speaking of in the future. And so when this talks about Jerusalem, mm -mm, not Jerusalem, guys, America, and specifically Utah, that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge for a desolating sickness shall cover the land and then here we have uh, the other signs especially signs of the coming of the Son of Man see they knew when it would begin and that there would be consecutive signs following the events of what the Son of Man would be doing during all this time. And I've been trying to give you the videos for it. As this week I've gone over that video for you. But people are more interested in porn. So here's the date that he knew of. It's in section 103. So a little background for you. When was the virus of the Egyptians under Moses going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go? Yeah, that was the last plague. There were stars falling from the heaven. I've been going over those videos of how we've been having massive amounts of stars falling from the heaven from September into October. And the three days of darkness, the second one, as I still have kept you in the dark on, I, was Father's Day this year. Instead of crossing over the United States, because you can only cross with two, the third was over the whole old world. From Africa all the way over, at least into India, if not into China. I mean, it was a long one. But it wasn't a total solar eclipse. It was an annular eclipse. Nonetheless, it was a big, it, it was a big deal. And so, uh, again, section 45, read it in terms of Mormons and Utah not in terms of Jews and Jerusalem. Because the Smiths knew of the signs. They knew of the location for the fulfillment. And so it's not Jerusalem. It's not the Jews. 
it's America, and it's Utah Mormons. And so he says in 15, well, 14, he gives the reason why Mormons are bad. If they pollute their inheritances, they shall be thrown down, for I will not spare them if they pollute their inheritances. Behold, I say unto you, the redemption of Zion must needs come by power. Here we go. Therefore, I will raise up unto my people a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel. The Exodus. And what caused Moses' exodus? A virus. And so when you go to the Exodus account, it says that in the first year was the virus and Moses uh, held a, uh, a holy ritual observance that made it he made it into a uh, yearly uh, holy day of Passover as he protected the house of Israel by having them stay home not go out and spread the virus not wearing masks sending the kids to school to be slaughtered sending the parents to work to be slaughtered sending the Mormons back to church temple and missions to be slaughtered The new year was when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. In the Jewish uh, timing is sunset. That starts the new day. And so Ruth Bader Ginsburg died on the Jewish New Year. Uh, it's the uh, civil one, not the religious one, but New Year nonetheless. Remember the the Bible it needs to be corrected as it had thrown me off because I was hoping and that's probably why I messed up but I assumed that the 18th of October being the last day of the first month of the new year we'd have our exodus but going back to the the exodus chapters 11 and 12 did not give us a date it was uh, chapter 13 that told us uh, that the Passover was to be celebrated in the religious New Year as they claim uh, but uh, yeah the coronavirus has to come first then when the government and the religion are destroyed, an exodus can then occur. And so we are approaching an election where Trump has already given up. He's already making plans for losing as he's giving away America, handing out money by the millions and billions uh, to his loyalists and the rich corporations already setting in motion, selling his his investments in China, getting money from that. A secret bank account in China, can you imagine if the Fox News found out of a secret bank in, in China from me? <laughs> yeah. Of course, Fox News didn't talk about Trump's secret bank account did they again they are the enemy of the people this is war we are in and we're being exterminated and so yes this is the date the year 
for the emerging of the virus that Joseph Smith said was going to be used as the weapon against us. And we're now in the new year. And still no exodus. And the reason why I need an exodus, we all need an exodus, is because Joseph Smith, back in 45 again, tells us exactly why we need an exodus. So let's go back to it. Uh, 63, right? Yep. Yeah. 66, technically. Uh, and he says, And it shall be called the New Jerusalem. Uh, Zion also, Zion and New Jerusalem, as I went over with you. A land of peace. Well, yeah, because Salem is peace in Hebrew. A city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God. Okay. Now you know why we need an exodus, but there's more. And the glory of the Lord shall be there, and the terror of the Lord shall also be there, insomuch that the wicked will not come in unto it. The Russians will try, and uh, wicked Mormons will try, but there will be laws set up. And I've gone over that with you in that uh, recent uh, playlist series. I put those videos exclusively in that playlist. They're, they're not in any other playlist this time. Uh, and you can recognize them from my uh, common uh, screensaver, which I've got things covering it up, programs covering it up, so I can't show you. But uh, I've shown you in those videos. Of Pyramid Cities of utopia with of course the uh, medical doctor forced into the position after the explosion that occurred on Star Stargate Atlantis uh, jewel state but there's more here in 68 and it shall come to pass among the wicked that every man that will not take his sword against his neighbor must needs flee unto Zion for safety. And there shall be gathered unto it out of every nation under heaven, and it shall be the only people that shall not be at war one with another. We, if America, when America falls, the tyrants of the world will be emboldened. They're already emboldened, but with America destroyed so that Joe Biden doesn't take over, they will be unleashed. Putin is already setting things in motion to attack Europe. He's having Trump uh, pull out of Germany. He had he caused Brexit, just like he caused our election scandal with Cambridge Analytica <coughs> of Steve Bannon, who was quoted by the Daily Beast before the election in 2016 that it was his intention to purposely destroy the world, destroy America. And he was Trump's advisor. But uh, China, I'm pretty sure, will resume against India. Is it India or Pakistan? 
or India is going after Pakistan, China and Tibet. Yeah, there are wars all over. North Korea will war against South Korea. And uh, you will see wars just unleash in full horror when America falls. And yes, Trump has already told us, I'm declaring martial law on election day. And we're just a couple of days until election day, a week and a couple of days. Like I told you, this week is going to be hell week. And I did the video about how Governor Herbert, in his Thursday address to the state, said, I, I have the washing hands thing in my mind, but he, he used the term, uh, I throw up my hands or something like that. He gave up. He said, I'm not responsible anymore. And so, yes, I specifically put the thumbnail picture uh, of uh, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate, who washes his hands to let the Christ die by the people. And then we have anti-maskers calling for the death of Utahns. I will not wear a mask. I will infect everyone with herd immunity. Murder, guys. And Russia has sleeper cells here in Utah. makes me wonder if that little red-headed girl that I, uh, it's, it's not really dated, spent time with, I guess. I kind of wonder if maybe she was the, the Utah version of, of, uh, um, uh, Maria Botina, that's her name. kind of wonder now. And then we can go into the Book of Mormon to go into detail about the horrible brutality, the graphic violence in great detail of what was done to the Nephites as they were destroyed. Didn't expect this to be so long. But this is why I set aside my Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian Petroglyph publications and other publications as I focused on Armageddon. The signs in the heavens and the events that, and the likeness of things on the earth. If you go to the Joseph Smith revision, wrongly called translation, of the Bible, Revelation 12. <sighs> oh, nice. Temperature dropped. And then by the sound of the cars traveling by, and there's a layer of, of snow melt. Well, the weather outside's delightful. But they still keep giving us hope. But there is no hope 
if there is no one faithful. Without faith, hope is vain. And so, yes, I am desperately pleading with you, Tom Mormons. Turn from your wickedness. Just stop it. Cut out the brainwashing blindness that Russia has put over your eyes. You're supposed to love your neighbor, not want them dead. Governor Herbert gave up. And yes, it's my fault. How dare I submit uh, the, the complaint or serve the complaint to the defense counsel for the church back on 27th of April, or February, sorry. Because he had had everything prepared before then. He had the task forces all set, ready to go. Uh, he just didn't check to find out if we had enough PPE. But I guess we did, because Nelson was able to donate PPE to China for the little uh, laundering of PPE, as Herbert went to China first for PPE to buy. And then the federal government stole it. So they had to buy other PPE and bring it in. As I've gone over those videos. <sighs> but after the church got served, the church not only tried to have me murdered in two different ways. One of them being a landlord trying to murder me again with an eviction. But then also uh, Herbert and Nelson by perpetuating the virus rather than doing what was necessary to stop it prevent it from spreading and now Utah has to be quarantined the whole state now has to be quarantined nobody can leave nobody can go anywhere we have to be quarantined and there isn't enough doctors to handle it now and the hospitals of those who are requiring hospitalization has now overwhelmed Utah's hospitals and so yeah they can't handle this anymore it's out of control and Herbert instead of taking responsibility for protecting the church because the church got served with the lawsuit exposing them for their involvement with what Joseph Smith knew was going to happen by an enemy. The enemy. The Illuminati. The sign of which was on Brigham Young's Ponderosa, which is now on State Street at Temple Square, the Eagle Gate. And he has Lucifer's doctrine symbol on the Salt Lake Temple Keystone Arch of the door of the temple at Salt Lake City Temple Square without Zion there is no hope there is no place of peace city of refuge place of safety God help us all Because uh, Judge Jenkins knew he needed to recuse himself. Judge Barlow recused himself because he knew he couldn't do the case. And so to have Judge Jenkins utterly defy the, the court, the United States government, the Constitution of the United States, to save the church as the church is murdering us as prophesied if you want to call it prophecy and the thing
things that Nelson did being compromised with Russia, I'm just aghast at how Mormons haven't figured it out. That they still make excuses to justify what Nelson has done to them. He has denied them exaltation, taken away the high priest office. And Mormons don't see it because the church specifically dumbs down Mormonism with their education. Only church approved curriculum. And even then, Mormons just listen rather than actually do the study themselves. And those who do try to do some study, they don't go thorough enough. They don't know how intensive study needs to be. I took a scripture study class at Rick's and uh, it, it's a, amazing how much I learned but uh, that helped me when I went to the University of Lethbridge as they added to my knowledge of the necessity of studying scripture and doing any kind of research in any scientific field and Mormons just aren't learned enough the church has censored and blocked them purposely dumbing down their education to hide the truth and thus we know why because Joseph's name is considered evil by the LDS Church. God help us all.